we will be talking about the process of cost allocation. So what is cost allocation? It means finding a method to assign indirect costs to the various things that we do. In order to allocate costs, we need to identify one or more cost pools. A cost pool is nothing more than a collection of costs. In this case, our cost pool will include only indirect costs because there's never a need to allocate direct costs. If you remember from the previous section, direct costs have a paperwork trail that helps us to know with a fair degree of certainty how much of these costs go into the various things that we're trying to assign costs to. That's not true with indirect costs, which is why generally only indirect costs are allocated. So what are we going to allocate them to? We're going to identify cost objects. A cost object is the thing that we are trying to identify how much does this thing cost us. We can choose any cost object that we want depending on the question that we're trying to answer. So it could be assigning costs to the various products that we make or the various services that we perform or various business units within our organization. The general rule is all costs have to go somewhere and that rule cannot be broken. So where do those costs go? Initially, the costs are assigned to one or more cost pools. In this chapter, we're only going to have one cost pool. That means that all of our indirect costs will be assigned to that pool. In subsequent sections, we'll be talking about why a firm might choose to have more than one cost pool. From the cost pool, all of those costs have to be assigned to cost objects. And the question is, how should we assign those costs and how will the way that we assign those costs affect our understanding of how much each cost object costs us? So the general procedure to do this is to define each pool. In this case, we're only having one pool. We're going to put all of our indirect costs into that pool. Then we have to make some kind of a rule for how we're going to allocate those costs. And then we're going to follow the rule and assign the costs to our cost objects. So let's take a look at an example. We have a firm. Here's the income statement for each division of the firm and for the company taken as a whole. All of the costs on the income statement are traceable to the various divisions except for one, and that is interest expense. The CEO wants to develop a methodology to assign a portion of the interest expense to each division, like that. And the question is, what's the right methodology to do that? So let's look at a schematic of this problem. We have $10,000 of interest costs. That's our cost pool. And we're trying to assign those interest costs to our three divisions. Those are going to be our cost objects. Now we have to decide how to do that. So we need some kind of an allocation rule. 
For example, we could simply say there are three divisions. We can take the interest, divide by three, and assign a portion of it to each of the divisions. That may not be the most useful or sophisticated way to do this. So let's look at some alternatives. One way would be to allocate the interest cost in proportion to the revenues that each division generates. That would be sort of following the matching principle where we match our expenses to the revenues that they generate. So the first thing that I did was to add up the revenues from each of the three divisions and I got $660,000. Then I can take the proportion that each division's revenue represents out of the total. So Division A generated $200,000 of revenues. That means it represents a little over 30% of all revenues. Division B represents 48.5% of all revenues. Division C contributed a little over 21% of all revenues. And then, of course, I add these percentages up. They have to equal 100%, otherwise I'd know I made a math error. Now, I'm going to use these percentages to allocate the interest costs to each of the divisions. Division A is responsible for contributing 30.3% of the revenues, so it gets 30.3% of the interest cost. And we can do the same thing with Division B and with Division C. Obviously, Division B contributed the largest amount of revenues, therefore it got the largest share of the interest costs. Division C contributed the smallest amount of revenues, so it gets the smallest amount of interest costs. This concept is sometimes called ability to bear because it means that we assign more to the divisions that can handle it better. Then we add up all of the amounts that we allocated to make sure that it adds up to $10,000. But that's not the only way that we could allocate this $10,000 of interest cost. Maybe instead of allocating on the basis of revenues, we should be allocating on the basis of operating income. So I added up all of the operating income from the three divisions, and I got $110,000 of total operating income. Then I can find the portion that each division represents out of the total. So Division A represents 20% of all of the operating income. Division B represents 54.5% of all of the operating income. And Division C represents 25.5%. And I add those percentages up just to make sure that it adds up to 100%. Now I can use these percentages to allocate the interest cost. For Division A, since it represents 20% of all of the operating income, that means it gets 20% of the interest cost. Division B gets more because it represents more out of the firm's total operating income. Division C, in this case, represents more operating income than Division A did, therefore it gets a higher proportion of all of the interest cost. Now we can add these up, make sure that it equals $10,000 because all costs have to go somewhere. So let's take a look at the difference in these two allocation methods. I've summarized the results 
for how much interest cost would be given to each division if we allocated based on revenues. And I've also summarized the results based on operating income. So my question to you is, which manager or managers would want interest to be allocated based on revenue? Take a look at the data for a moment and see which managers would choose interest allocation based on revenue. Exactly. Division B and Division C receive less of the interest costs when revenue is used compared to when operating income is used. They would much prefer to receive less of this cost rather than more of this cost. So they would prefer to have the allocation method be based on revenue. What about manager or managers who would want interest to be allocated based on operating income? Take a look at the data for a moment and then see what you think. Absolutely. The manager of Division A would much prefer that operating income be used as the allocation base because in that case he would save over a thousand dollars of interest cost and most managers would want less cost assigned to their division rather than more cost. So now my question to you is should interest be allocated to the divisions? Think about it for a moment. Here's what I think. It all depends. It depends on what you are trying to accomplish. One of our basic rules in cost accounting is that we are what we are rewarded to be. If you assign interest to the various divisions, you'd need to know two things. One is, do the managers have the ability to make decisions that will influence how much interest they will incur? Because you know that it is wrong to evaluate people on things over which they have no control. In addition, you have to think about what it is that you are trying to incentivize. That is, what is it that you want managers to do? And that will tell you the answer to this question, should interest be allocated to the various divisions. Another basic rule of cost accounting is numbers advise us, but they don't rule us. In this case, there's no law that says you have to allocate or you have to allocate in a particular way. You look at the numbers and you try to decide whether this is going to encourage or discourage people from doing the things that you actually want.